Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, new video where I will present to you the latest oral exam questions that are being asked of uh, ship master candidates. I have received a number of questions from both students and the surveyors uh, who I know personally and uh, it's not possible for me to present all the questions here but uh, I will do so in parts. So this is uh, the first part. I am presenting almost uh, 30 to 40 questions in this video. And because of the number of questions, I cannot discuss the answers of each. Uh, please note that the answers for most of the questions are provided in some videos of mine. So please go through those videos in relevant topics. All the videos are uh, organized under playlist and with suitable titles. So you can find them. In today's video, I will focus mainly on the latest questions that are being asked so that uh, you can prepare accordingly. And if there are some questions for which I have not provided the answers, I will make those videos in future and provide them to you. Let's get started. So the first question uh, is that uh, what is uh, or what does the master unlimited uh, certificate of competency signify? and what kind of ships can you sail on after obtaining this certificate uh, you are joining a ship in singapore as master mention the key points of your takeover process make sure that you focus on the key points and don't start off with something that may not be considered the absolute priority uh, what do you understand by bill of lading and what are you as a master signing it? So what is a bill, lead, bill of lading used for? Um, why do you have to sign it? When do you put comments on it? Uh, so you have to know everything about that process, right? So I have discussed this in my videos on cargo work. Please, you can find the answers there. Uh, I've also discussed how to take over the ship as a master. You can find the answer there as well. Um, second mate is joining a tanker vessel under your command what certificates is he or she required to carry so as a master you should be checking the second mate certificate so mention the certificates uh, as a second mate is normally required to carry also specifically check for certain certificates that are required to be carried for tanker vessels make sure that you also mention the stcw requirement uh, where the certificate of competency or certificates of short courses should mention the appropriate chapter or section of the stcw code what is the difference between type specific and generic ECDIS certificate? Uh, again, please watch my videos on ECDIS and you will find the answer there. What is a certificate of a registry and when do you need it? So COR I am assuming is certificate of registry here. Um, uh, some some people say that it is chain of responsibility but i think in the context of which the question is being asked i think this is regarding ship certificate of registry and when do you register it what is the process behind it again i have discussed this in my videos what is the validity of a medical certificate once you obtain a medical certificate for joining a ship what is the validity of it how long after that you can join a ship how will you load uh, the cargo of diesel after petrol and how will you prepare the tanks um, how or where does wash water go after washing the tanks so this is about marpole and its requirements draw the flammability diagram so make sure that you draw the flammability diagram not only draw it but also label it and you should be able to explain it so it's not only about you drawing it but also being able to interpret information from it explain it to the surveyor so that the surveyor knows that you have a thorough knowledge of the flammability diagram what precautions will you follow before loading oil on tankers what is the wall wash process on product tankers so i have not made a video on this i will make a video on this uh, wall wash process if you don't know it's mainly to get rid of the contaminants um, i will make a detailed video on this uh, in future and hopefully load it so that you can benefit from it uh, what is the process of inerting and purging of cargo tanks you can find that answer in cargo books as well how and where will you find information regarding free surface movements and free surface effect so again you can go into the stability booklet and you can find information you can provide examples to the uh, surveyor and you can also explain the formula for calculating free surface correction why it is important so the more information you provide about stability calculation or about any of these processes uh, the better it is uh, there could be a situations where you do not have the practical knowledge so at that point of time uh, be honest and let the surveyor know that your knowledge comes from purely reading from books or learning from lecturers or talking to your peers and uh, but the more information you provide the more knowledge you can provide about that the more the surveyor will be happy 
what is the formula for free surface effect how do you calculate free surface correction so on and so forth what do you understand by the virtual loss of gm gm so here again i recommend that you draw the diagram to show how does a virtual loss of gm occur and what is the impact of it on shape stability what is the criterion for intact stability uh, stability information is provided by chief met to you as a master what are you checking for uh, please mention the key stability parameters that you will check for uh, like uh, the gm uh, for a vessel uh, why what is the value of gm that you will find acceptable depending on your type of vessel uh, free surface correction uh, loading um, stresses uh, be uh, uh, sharing forces bending moments all those things that you are looking for describe the imo stability criteria what is an official logbook and what entries are required to be made in it explain the frequency with which the ship drills are scheduled as a master what certificates do you check for on joining the vessel how long does the emergency generator run for and uh, explain the emergency steering gear test carried out at sea so these are again uh, answers uh, some of it you can find on my um, videos some of it you have to find out yourself uh, i will try to make a videos on uh, the topics that i have not covered remember when we talk about uh, checking for certificates as a master they are basically trying to assess your knowledge about not only the number of certificates but what is the validity period how frequently do you carry out surveys to renew the certificate uh, can you uh, go beyond the validity period of a certificate for how long can you go what is the process behind it uh, official logbook entries give examples explain why it is important what is the requirement of having an official logbook um, IMO stability criteria mention the criteria but you should be also able to explain the criteria if required don't only uh, uh, memorize and regurgitate it in front of the surveyor and be ready that the surveyor may have some follow-up questions to ask of you virtual loss of GM already explained and criterion of intact stability again same thing you'll be able to explain it in practical sense how would you go about using this information for your ensuring that your ship is safe uh, steering failure in singapore strait what will be your action uh, this is a follow-up question from the last question that we discussed where we explained the emergency steering gear testing procedure at sea there's a fire in engine room what is your action what is the width and depth of navigable water under what circumstances can load lines be submerged what is the meaning of condition of class um, class what does that basically mean what is the meaning of classification society is it mandatory for a ship to belong to a classification society what is their role what is the importance of it who surveys the vessel classification society or flag state what is included in a vessel inspection for mlc compliance mlc stands for maritime labor convention uh, what is the meaning of seaworthiness how would you describe seaworthiness how do you check for seaworthiness and draw the gz curve diagram and explain the key components of it so be able to explain that so gz curve diagram you can get from stability seaworthiness make sure that you mention the key aspects of seaworthiness that that means that if you yes, say example you are taking over the ship as a master and you are supposed to be now taking the vessel out how will you make sure that you have checked for seaworthiness is there a certificate provided what are the checks required how do you check for weather tightness water tightness of the vessel uh, included what is included in vessel inspection for mlc compliance there are five key areas of mlc i have explained that in my previous videos make sure you mention all the five key areas such as living and working conditions uh, accommodation facilities uh, then if we talk about document and enforcement compliance uh, 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 then employment conditions so on and so forth there are five five key areas um, who service vessel depends on what is the purpose of it so talk about classification society when do they come in inspect when does flag state come in inspect the vessel um, what is the importance of classification society how involved they are so remember classification society is involved right from the building stage of the vessel why they are involved because they set the standard for ship construction and seaworthiness so these are all questions that are kind of related and you will find that uh, the surveyor is going about it in a certain pattern in a certain order and they're trying to get your uh, knowledge or trying to assess your knowledge about whether you understand about the various uh, processes involved right from the construction of the vessel to the point that it is launched into the sea or you take over and you take it out at sea and you test it at sea right in fire and engine room talk about uh, the safety remember to keep the people safe it is not only about extinguishing the fire but making sure that at all points of time you have kept the safety of the crew and you have given it the paramount importance safety of the crew safety of life is first safety of ship is second and then it is the safety of cargo so always make sure that no matter what actions you are taking you are not putting the lives at risk 
and then making sure that the priority is of course extinguishing the fire steering failure in singapore strait then that is a link to the previous question where you explain the emergency steering gear test so this is where the surveyor wants to know whether you can actually or practically put it in action how will you go about steering the vessel from the emergency steering flat is there a process before you switch over to emergency steering can you use the follow-up or a non-follow-up mode can you steer by magnetic compass so when we talk about steering failure we are assuming that the gyro compass has failed so you can use steer by magnetic compass and or do you have to steer by uh, the emergency steering gear test so uh, that is what the surveyor wants to know from you as to whether you can quickly take action in an emergency scenario or in a critical situation such as singapore Strait, where there is a lot of traffic all around you so i hope these questions are useful to you i have uh, discussed almost 40 questions here i will discuss 40 or 50 more as i get those questions i have got those questions with me uh, i just didn't want to include them in this video otherwise it would become very long i have given you some tips on how to go about finding the answers and how to go about framing the answer what to include in your answer i will try to keep this video short so i will stop for now please let me know if this video was useful and i look forward to your comments and feedback bye for now and good luck for your exams